Well, uh, the church is definitely in transition when we encounter the scripture of this day. That this is coming close to the day 40, when Jesus, in the resurrection, is about to ascend to the Father in heaven. And the disciples are going to be missing the very bodily, resurrected bodily presence of Jesus among them. And so they're starting to get worked up, as you can imagine, as uh, they're going through this transition. Jesus is reminding them, I'm not going to leave you abandoned. I'm not going to leave you orphaned. Let's have that first fill in the blank. Jesus is reminding them, and this is in John 14, 8. I will not leave you orphans. As my own family has been going through a transition, um, there have been a, a lot of crazy stories that have come out of our uh, thought process and uh, of thinking about the new move. And when we went to visit uh, Williamston and the parsonage there, we were showing Sephora and Ethan uh, their new home. Uh, what they got to pick which room they would have. They got to also drive around and tour around. We got a chance to visit the school that they would go to. But somehow, in the process of getting a, a sense of the new place, and hope, our hope was is that it would help them get used to the idea that we're going to be moving. Somehow, this was short circuited in Zipporah just a little bit. Somehow, she started thinking that this was going to be only her new home. And that we were all going to be moving someplace else. She wasn't able to articulate that at first. And it took a couple of days for her to finally express that concern. And obviously, before she can verbalize it, it comes out in strange behaviors, right? <laughs> uh, you know, she's a little bit edgy at, at school, edgy at home. And we're just trying to figure out what's going on. She goes on to say, you know, I hope that grandma will be able to take me in. I hope that grandma will be able to come and live with me. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not sure. Of course grandma will be able to come. She'll be closer. And of course she's always welcome. But what's really bothering me? And then days later she finally said, I don't want to move by myself. I want to live with you guys still. <laughs> I hope we be orphaned. Honey, maybe you don't understand. We're not abandoning you. We're not going to orphan you. You're coming with us. We're all going together. We're all going to live in that house together. Oh, I didn't get that. <laughs> we'll not leave you orphaned. And, you know, maybe that's the, we you know, blame it on a four-year-old, but I think the more things change, the more they stay the same. And we're all having these same kind of feelings, and it's certainly the disciples are having the same kind of feelings, because Jesus is really going to physically leave them. And there is going to be this change. And they're feeling like there's going to be no place for them. And Jesus, in other places, he's saying, you know, if I go to the Father, know that I'm not abandoning. If I go to the Father, know that in my Father's house there are many rooms, and I go before you to prepare a room for you. So I'm excited that the Williamston trustees are already preparing Sephora's room. I mentioned this earlier. We asked them to do some painting, and uh, we said, well, Sephora likes pink, and she has you know, three different shades of pink, and it's a very complicated process. But if you don't want to do it, we understand. And they were all excited. Oh, yeah, we'll be happy to do this. We're, we're excited to do this. And so we said, well, there's a stencil bit that will be uh, ribbons along the wall on one side. So it's a darker pink below, then a ribbon stencil going around, and then a lighter pink above. And they said, uh, okay. But the, the trustee was really, who was dealing with uh, Julia, was really excited once he downloaded the uh, stencil. He said, I can do this. I'm so excited that I, you know, she wants a link at her place before she even lands. It will be a place prepared for her. And even though the disciples are going to be living in two different locations than Jesus. Jesus will be living on heaven, and the disciples will be living in the world. And there is a kind of separation. Jesus reminds us that he won't leave us alone. He will send us the Holy Spirit. Let's have that next phone right now. Jesus asked the Father to send us an advocate. An advocate. The Holy Spirit. The one who will advocate for us. The one who will look after us. The one who will empower us to be Jesus-like in the world. Even when we forget to be Jesus-like by ourselves. 
We have a dance partner, this advocate. They help us keep frame, they help us dance together so that we can be inscribed into the family of God, into the body of Christ. Today, we have set up our baptismal font, and we welcome Bryce into the family of God, into the body of Christ. But where you see water and basin, I see adoption agency. I see a place that no matter who you are or where you come from, or even if you have parents or not parents, if you ever feel abandoned, you are not orphaned, you are welcomed into the family of God through this place. Do you see? You are adopted in. In the power of the Advocate, the Holy Spirit has descended on this as we dip our fingers into the bowl and pray around it. The Holy Spirit has descended upon all of us and has inscribed us into the family of God no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, no matter who abandoned us. We are loved by that Advocate. Praise God. Jesus reminds us that the more time we spend together in the body of Christ, the more time we'll begin to resemble one another. I'm told that uh, this happens even with our pets that we adopt into the household. I don't know which one I look more like, Hannah or Sirius. <laughs> Not always, okay. Well, we, we, at least if we don't start to look like our pets, we, maybe we start to take on some of the characteristics of our pets. Maybe we start to take on some of the characteristics of those around us. I know that the same is true about married couples for a long time. They begin to resemble one another. Maybe even complete one another's sentences. From two different families, haha, -ha, that's true. From two different families, two people come together on our knit in the body of a very spiritual, sacramental way, knit together, so that they begin to resemble one another. And I think this is what Jesus is getting at when he, when he says this business about, oh, you know, I'm in the Father, the Father's in me, and I'm in you. Boy, when he starts talking like that, my head starts to spin a little bit. But let's have this fill in the blank. Jesus says this at John 14, 20. I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoa, what's he talking about? But maybe he's talking about a kind of indwelling that is this resemblance. Resemblance that we begin to take on as adopted sisters and brothers in Christ. As the body of Christ in the world, we take on a kind of resemblance. So Jesus sends us an advocate that will help us in this process of becoming one family. As we approach Memorial Day, I'm thinking about uh, the movie Saving Private Ryan that they show it on TV every Memorial Day. And it's a violent film, and it's sometimes hard to see, just like The Passion of the Christ. Um, but it, I think it's an important <coughs> film to see. Have you seen it before? Anybody here? Okay. So, saving Jack, uh, well, Ryan, uh, James Francis Ryan, um, had seven brothers. And all six of his brothers died in the war in different fields of operation. Some were in Japan, in the, in the Pacific Rim, and some were in Europe during World War II. They all seemed to die within a short period of time, and the uh, military decided to send uh, Captain John Miller and his crew to go and find Ryan and save him, to bring him home. They did not want to leave the family abandoned. You know, sort of reverse orphanage, if you will. If you lose all the sons, the parents are left abandoned. They did not want that to happen, and so they sent an advocate to go and find Private Ryan. And in the end, I remember, you know, uh, well, I don't want to give it, no, no spoilers, but um, Ryan is saved, and he comes home, and he is trying to figure out, have I earned the sacrifice that was laid down so that I might be able to live? Have I earned the sacrifice that was made on my behalf? And we often think about that, too, when we think about what Jesus has done for us. Have I earned the sacrifice that Jesus has made for me? And the truth is, we can never earn it. And probably, the sacrifice made for Private Ryan would be almost impossible for him to earn. But one way that he can start is to pick up that resemblance of those who lay down their lives for him. And he asks his wife, you know, have I been a good man? She sort of doesn't give him an answer to that. Have I lived a good life? 
And she's able to give an answer together with all of us, with the family, you have lived a good life. And this is the way that we begin to resemble our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us. As we've been adapted, adopted into his family, this is the way we begin to resemble it. I am just deeply humbled by how many folks want to be joining the church and want to be baptized in these closing days. That has not always been my experience. So a lot of times folks would just sort of put it on hold and wait for the new person to come at this point because uh, they're waiting to see what the new person is like. I'm so proud of this congregation that you have resembled Christ in a way that when people walk in the door, they go, hmm, I fit. There's a place for me here. And I want to be a part of this community. And I don't care who's up there at the pulpit. That says wonderful things. So keep up the good work in the Holy Spirit. And resemble Christ even more than you already are. Amen. Your challenge this week. Choose challenges. Advocate for one of the least of these. You know who these people are, the ones who are marginalized, the ones who are given a hard time, maybe even in the life of the church, maybe even in the future as we enter into a time of transition, uh, the marginalized one might be uh, some people who feel like they've been displaced. Advocate for those folks. Contemplate the ways you have felt orphaned and the way God has met you in an adoption in, in that moment. Share with a buddy your experience of indwelling and resemblance. How have you taken on maybe the traits of your pet or maybe the traits of your husband or spouse? Uh, share with someone a story of that indwelling. Now as the good news has been proclaimed and the scriptures read, may we offer the best of ourselves to God.